With the selection of left tackle Christian Derrissaw in the first round, the die is cast at Minnesota Fighting Vikings 2020 second round pick Ezra Friggin Cleveland will remain inside a guard and he can become an elite guard. I have faith. Ezra, the former Boise State Bronco, was a physical freak at left tackle back in the day. Uh, eventually got his shot inside a right guard week six, started nine games for the Vikings last year, posted a solid 66.2 PFF grade, 67.5 in the run game, but allowed 23 pressures and five sacks and it really was like jamming a square peg in the round hole but with Derisaw in the building you're not going to pass up on talent and it is what it is Ezra is going to have to win at guard here are three keys for him going forward number one no factor Last year, you could tell from his interviews that he wasn't thrilled about kicking inside the guard and switching sides of the line, but it can't be a factor. This is the hand that he was dealt. Now bust your ass and become the best guard possible. Yes, it could impact your second contract, and you have to deal with 350-pound mofos versus using your quickness on the edge, but whatever. No factor. Get it done. Number two, communication. A ton of success on the offensive line comes down to communication and chemistry. And with the guy on the right and your left, you have to be in sync and good to go. And now when you're a tackle, you're only flanked by one other lineman, the guard. But at guard, you're surrounded. Tackle, center, everything happens much faster inside as well. So whichever side he ends up, I think it's probably going to be the left side uh, since they kept Wyatt Davis, no matter what, at his natural right guard spot at rookie camp. His communication with Bradbury at center and whatever tackles on his side needs to be tight. There were times last year when he was inside a guard where he was fooled by stunts and games, and that's just practice. That's just getting in reps. That's just getting settled. And he was exquisite in the run game, but pass protection, just like the rest of the Vikings offensive line last year, certainly needs to be improved. And number three, training and anchor. And since he's likely going to be inside a guard for the next three years, got to start training like a guard. So that punch has to get quicker, has to have more stank behind it. Also has to go down the Brian O'Neill route, add good weight and lower body strength, and that goes without saying. Ezra, is that a disadvantage because he's pretty light coming in at 311 pounds? Also, he has a high center of gravity being six foot six, but low man wins in the trenches. But if he can't be the lowest, you have to be the firstest with the mostest. So he has to use his quickness and hit like a brick house right off the snap. I think that's really going to help him against the likes of Kenny Clark and Akeem Hicks and the other great defensive tackles of the world until his body fills out. And the this new Vikings offensive line does have a lot of question marks, but I think the future is extremely bright. You know, questions like Derisok, is he good to go at left tackle week one? Is Wyatt Davis, is he going to be a starter right away? Can Bradbury get his stuff together in year three? Can Rick Dennison actually do anything? anything and lastly can Ezra successfully transition to a full-time guard but I believe man I believe that this is finally the right offensive line to take this offense into the stratosphere I believe in, especially in Ezra Cleveland where I think that he will put in the work and he'll become one of the most mobile agile and hostile guards in the NFL get it done let's go uh be your thoughts Ezra kicking inside the guard full-time let us know in the comment section below subscribe for daily Vikings takes want to support that work post on the Venmo but until next time Skull production value